Um, I recorded a video on Sunday about the work that I'm doing to our camper van. Um, but as I was a bit rushed, I wanted to get some stuff done on the van. Um, so I just did a one take on the GoPro where I probably didn't give enough context because I'm, I've already taken apart all of this from the van. Driver's seat, oh, um, oh wait, I'm confused now. That side. <laughs> um, these are the solar panels that are, are about to um, be installed. I've already taken a battery out as well. Um, still one to take out. Um, but I just wanted to make this little introduction um, to give you a little bit more context because that video is about 20 minutes of me explaining what I'm trying to do and where I'm at. And uh, I just thought it would be a bit um, weird to, um, to watch it without any further context. So um, right after this little bit that I'm talking, where you can see all of the bits from the van that have come out, um, I'll just do a little um, presentation on the iPad with um, how the van is set up from factory because it's a Volkswagen California and it is sold as a camper van and built by Volkswagen to be like that. So all of the camping stuff is built into it, um, which limits me. And also many of my decisions, which you may or may not agree with, are driven by the fact that I am trying to keep the van as close to stock or all of the modifications that I do are, um, I try to make them reversible. So if I regret, what if I want to take it back or take it out, that there is no permanent damage to the van. Um, it's a fine balance um, because we don't intend to sell the van and it's ours and we have to use it and we have to make it usable for how we use it. Um, I'm not preserving the van for the next guy, but also at the same time, I do enjoy the way it's made from factory and I do try to keep it as close to factory and original as I can. Again, making all uh, modifications as reversible as possible. So bear that in mind. And again, I will say this, you will, will hear me say this during the other segment um, when I'm recording in the van. Um, if you have any ideas, suggestions about how to better do things, I'm all ears. Please leave a comment, get in touch. Yeah, I'm, I'm not experienced with this. I do things the way I think they're supposed to be done. I try and do some research, but again, uh, I'm counting on your help uh, to, uh, to, do, to get this job done. So without further ado, here's me or future me on the iPad. See you later. Well, okay, here we are on the iPad. For those of you who don't know, um, our camper van or um, this is a VW a T5 uh, California. It's a, it's a VW original camper van. It's built like this by VW. Um, this is an actual photo of our Delia, as we call it. Yes, she's got a name. Uh, also, you can see lovely Callie here and Anna. <laughs> um, and as you can see here, or well, or even better, probably right about here. Um, I've already added, uh, already added in 2018, maybe um, a couple of solar panels, um, which don't match. <clears throat> um, and plus this this one here on the front, which is like is like a flexible type thing doesn't um it's weathering it's it's aging really poorly it's the weather has damaged it so that's why i'm replacing these with two 150 watt solar panels uh same style as this one with a rigid frame which just i think is better um after having have having had this um this type of thing and you can see that to install these i haven't uh, done any permanent modifications they just bolt on with some um, angle alley aluminium profile onto the roof rails and the way the electricity is um, um, passed on to the uh, to the inside is 
through a coiled cable here at the back which you can also see right there you can see it right there so yeah I will be replacing those the coil cable will stay uh, I'll just replace both panels and try and rewire the the um, uh, the um, the the system slightly to make it a little bit better. So in in, in terms of um, the stock uh, configuration for the camping, um, the electrical side of the the camping stuff on the van on the California itself is what you can see here, which is the alternator, um, the engine battery responsible for starting the engine. And this right here is a um, split charge relay, which is the traditional way that camper vans do this, um, this separation between engine and leisure batteries, which are these two. This one is under the driver's seat. This one is in the rear cupboard. They're connected in parallel for 12 volts. And then when you start the engine, this relay trips and allows the alternator to charge both these batteries. So um, again, um, then you can see that from the positive of one of the um, leisure batteries and the negative of the other one, all of the loads of the camping um, side of things are powered, being the uh, water pump from the water tank, the fridge unit, the um, inverter charger that charges the batteries when you plug the van to mains power on a campsite for instance and this is just um, this thing here is just a power meter sends the current being drawn from the batteries to the uh, camping controller the original camping controller on in the van which is this thing right here uh, fuses um, a 12 volt plug lighter um, socket not plug sorry and a 220 socket that only works when you're plugged into mains at a campsite so the main thing to take away here is that Volkswagen have very accurate or oh, rightly um, done this which I've mentioned just mentioned which is pulling the positive out of one battery and the negative out of the other so that the loads um, take power um, um, equally from both batteries and, and not take more power from one than the other leading to a shorter lifespan of one of the batteries and this is what I need to take um, take into um, into account when I'm doing the the rewiring this is just a 3d scheme um, a drawing of the locations this is the engine battery under the driver's seat leisure battery and the rear cupboard uh, leisure battery as well so that you have there's a here's a 2d scheme of things where um, this is how the van is set up from factory along with the what I've added what I've added through um, through the years so this is the engine compartment engine battery and alternator this is the first um, leisure battery uh, this is the second leisure battery this is something I've added and I could go into um, detail at some point if some of you um, are interested which is a um, an extra auxiliary auxiliary tank for water for hot water it's got two 100 watt heating heating elements and uh, a hose that goes outside the van so you can shower with hot water outside the van this is the solar char um, charger so power from the panels comes in through here something like this uh, this is also powering at the minute these two heating um, elements and then it's feeding into this battery here which is parallel connected to the other battery this is a inverter that I've added a 220 volt inverter this is the fridge right here in the middle and what I need to do 
is rip out everything I've done so far because some of the um, wire gauges need to um, need to be bigger, need to be thicker. And I need to find a way to do the same thing that Volkswagen have done, which is probably be able to route one cable from this battery, a positive, and the negative from this one with, with the same length onto a couple of bus bars here in this cabinet in the middle so that any loads that I add to the system, be it the uh, hot water tank, be it this inverter, or anything else I might add in time, draw their current equally from both batteries uh, and this is the main thing so but the main issue with this is running a cable through this section here through the from the front driver's seat onto the rear cupboard this is the the tricky bit that I'm trying to find a way without poking holes in the van <laughs> to run these cables also, the split charge relay, which is here, will need to be replaced with a DC to DC charger because I'm installing the lithium batteries. So um, this will need to be replaced and the DC charger is a lot, a lot bigger than the split relay, split charge relay, um, which means I need to find a place to put it here somehow. I'm also still figuring that out as you will see in the upcoming uh, section in this um, in this video. I hope this helps give give some context as to what will happen and if you have any questions or you need me to go into detail about anything else just let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to help and uh, up next is the section where I'm actually working on the van show what I've done so far and um, what I'm planning to do next and uh, again, if you have any ideas or any questions, just please reach out. I'm happy to uh, take any suggestions or uh, answer any questions you might have. And uh, well, uh, see you in a minute. Hi, morning. Um, Sunday morning here and you meet me at the back of the van, the camper van, uh, T5 California Volkswagen from 2007. And this video is, well, I've just decided to do it, so it's not going to be a big production. Um, and there's no script, there's no anything, so bear with me if there are any pauses, if I stop to think. Uh, but I really just want to do this because, any more than anything else for me, um, because I've done electrical work in, uh, in the van in the past, and now that I'm doing it again, I realize that I don't remember anything. <laughs> I've forgotten everything that I've done. Um, so hopefully making these videos will be a good reference for me in the future. If I need to go back and change anything or fix a problem, I can refer back to these videos and maybe that'll help me. Also, maybe it will help you if you wanna you know, just do your own work on your van and you feel like you need some help or maybe maybe it'll give you some good ideas. And lastly, if you're watching this and you see any big blunders, any mistakes, any things, anything that I could do better, please do let me know because I will be doing this over the coming weeks and there is time to change or do anything, do something else a better way. So I'm going to just briefly run through what I'm going to do. I've already taken apart a big chunk, a big um, part of the van to get access to everything I need. I will probably take apart a few more things, but I'm going to run you um, very briefly over everything I've done so far, the, the work I've done in the past that has been done and that I'm about to redo, overhaul. Um, so, well, without further ado, here we go, so I will be replacing the solar panels on the roof, which are currently mismatched um, and they're not very good. So you can see them right here. So this is like a type of flexible panel thing. 
um, the wires are running through the um, roof rails right here on the side which isn't very good they get damaged by the sun um, and this one is a different panel so now I've got two similar to this 150 watt panels to install um, twin same type of uh, exactly the same type of panel so I might I will try and put them together um, instead of apart so I can run the cables underneath them out the back and then through this coil cable um, to the rear um, without using the C channels that's one part of the job um, then the current solar charger is inside the rear cupboard right there if you can see it um, I might uh, keep it there and use that one or I might just um, use the Renogy charger that I've got to install new if I can use that these are the new batteries uh, that I will be installing lithium iron phosphate Renogy batteries 12 volt 100 amp hour each and they will be dropping in to the original um, battery spot which is the rear one is right here there has been some work done here by me as there's a shunt there that measures what's coming out of the of both batteries and then there's some cables running into the cupboard on that side and there's also other stuff to redo which is this mess right here uh, which I'm not too pleased about it's it's um, a line that goes down from the charger to a extra um, uh, water tank which I've added heating elements to that is underneath the van but it does need um, thicker um, gauge cables so that I feel good about it. I'm not quite happy of, with how I did it the last time. And well then inside the van is where I, you can see that I've already taken out the uh, driver's seat and the front battery that goes here that is connected in parallel to the rear battery that I've just shown you. Um, and at the minute, minute I am just trying to figure out what my possibilities are to run cables because when installing lithium iron phosphate batteries or lithium batteries um, what happens is you need to protect install um, it is recommended to install a DC to DC charger or converter so that when you're charging the leisure batteries from the alternator because lithium batteries can suck up a lot of energy um, uh, a lot of a lot of current they can actually damage the alternator and you can damage the batteries as well or at least shorten their lives their lifespan so it, it it's always ideal to instead of using the split charge relay which is the typical setup you'll see with the lead acid batteries and it's right here um, uh, the original Volkswagen split charge relay is um, is here. What this does is it just cuts off the connection between your engine battery and your leisure batteries when you turn off the ignition and when you when you turn it on it turns it on so it can charge the rear batteries or the leisure batteries from the engine. So this little thing which is quite big is a Renogy hybrid unit as in it is a DC to DC charger and it w would go instead of that split relay so on one side you'll connect the engine battery then it'll get an ignition signal and on the other side you would connection connect your leisure batteries and this will limit the current that goes on to the batteries from the alternator thereby protecting the alternator and the batteries and give you a better management of the system this hybrid unit is very chunky it's quite big so I have no idea how I'm gonna fit it in there um, this is what I'm trying to work out at the minute if I'm gonna be able to use this uh, and find a place for it rather where be it inside this cupboard and I can run wires through that hole onto there 
or somewhere inside the uh, the driver's seat frame onto this side or that because I have installed in the past when I installed the solar systems I installed battery cutoffs for the leisure um, which you can see right there um, battery cutoffs power meters um, an inverter I will be redoing this panel cutting a new panel out to remove all of this because the new lithium iron batteries have uh, Bluetooth monitoring and uh, just a, um, a single display that controls everything because well they're smart they've got all the electronics built in so none of this is necessary I can get rid of all of it and one thing that I am also doing and let me show you this is installing a fan a cooling fan for the fridge unit I'm if you own a California you are well aware that the fridge unit which is right there the compressor for it is right be be behind this this little panel and also the evaporator or the condenser I can't quite remember um, is b right here next to the compressor so in the heat it it doesn't ventilate very well it gets hot and it takes away from the um, the uh, efficiency of the um, fridge unit which makes it, which makes it run for longer so someone's come up with the quite clever idea of uh, just putting a fan onto the panel this is a um, a cut out the panel I'm gonna cut out to replace that one hopefully this will be like that and this will hopefully keep the um, the uh, the con compressor cooler and working less. Uh, supposed to be about a 40% savings in, in energy from the uh, compressor working less, which I'm quite keen to see if that'll be the case because uh, that would be very good. So, yeah, at the minute I might have to. Um, um, forego this um, if I can't find the room to install it because oh I said it was a uh, hybrid unit because it also has a solar input and this would allow me to get rid of the Victron solar charger that's in the rear route the solar panel cables onto this unit and so this unit would manage all of the leisure charging from the solar um, and from the alternator and it would even allow you to charge the engine battery from the solar when the leisure batteries are charged which is really good um, again the problem is running wires um, in a van like this where there is little room for anything um, I don't want to take apart the whole van, I don't want to drill holes, I don't want to modify it, I don't want to do anything that ruins, well, not ruin, but uh, I don't want to be poking and drilling holes and cutting stuff out. I try to keep it as original as possible or that, so that every modification that I do is reversible for the most part, and that's what I've done so far, and I'm pretty happy with it with uh, the way I've done uh, all the modifications I've done so far because they are entirely entirely reversible um, that said it is our van we're never gonna sell it well never say never but um, there is no intention to sell it at any point and we need to find a good way to use it most of the time we are off-grid we don't use um, campsites or very rarely so going using with the, the um, lithium iron phosphate batteries will pretty much double the capacity that we get out, out of these AGMs hopefully they'll last the rest of the life of the van maybe they do maybe they don't but I'm hoping that they do um, and um, yeah at the minute what I am figuring out and if you see anything or have any ideas or if you've done this <laughs> or something similar and you have an idea or a suggestion please let me know leave it in the comments um, because over the next week I'll be ordering some more stuff I need um, 
cable I need thick gauge cable 35 50 70 millimeter squared cable um, and uh, I need some bus bars I need some connectors that I need to get to get because I will need um, this is one of the modifications that sadly has to be done which is like this is like the original Volkswagen battery terminal but this isn't gonna work um, this will have to be cut I will have to crimp a um, a um, M8 hole terminal I don't know what you call it in English um, and I will have to extend this cable um, but that's one of those things that has to be done and it's nothing that can't be redone at a later time um, and uh, and just install something similar to this again if need be um, but yeah I'm still considering if I'm gonna um, remove this um, seat frame because the wires so the wire to the the wiring loom to the rear cupboard comes from this hole right there if you can see it all the way over here it comes behind this panel which I might take out at some point but this battery plate doesn't come out I even took out those bolts on there hoping that this plate where the battery sits would come out but it's it's spot welded to the um, to the whole frame so I've taken out the handbrake cover as well um, and I might take out this frame to see what's underneath here because all of the wiring looms are coming from underneath and if I could get access in a way to route cables from here to there and then onto there and onto the rear cupboard this would allow me to um, install the ideal system would which would be um, this thing um, with the solar plugged into this removing the Victron charge controller and just having this manage everything with the Bluetooth controller onto the phone um, I think would be the best situation alternatively I can just use this and keep it um, just as uh, the alternator intermediary or just the DC to DC charger forgetting about the solar functions of it um, and keep that Victron solar charge that's in the back working <sighs> or um, if there is no other way the Victron Orion series is a DC to DC charger from Victron so the same type of device well not quite because it doesn't have the solar features but it's a DC to DC uh, converter which I think are a lot smaller than this um, so I could probably fit it in the place of this solar of this uh, split charge relay off here to the side or off to that side right next to the battery and just keep it tidy over here and just again forget about the solar connection keep it at the back um, and both systems will work separately charging the leisure batteries um, the leisure batteries have um, a charge limit of 50 amps so this uh, is a 30 amp charger the Victron solar uh, charger that I've got is a 20 amp charger so even if I leave them hooked up together um, in parallel there is no danger well I can limit this I can go into the settings and limit how much I can allow uh, current to pass uh, onto the leisure battery so I can easily keep it under that 50 amp limit um, if I get an Orion charger I just need to get one that is rated for somewhere around 20 to 30 amps so there's the danger of at any point um, letting any more than 50 amps going on to the rear um, to the leisure batteries but yeah this video is running long enough I am probably boring I hope that what I've said is in some way understandable and again if you have any ideas on if I'm going about this all wrong please do let me know I will maybe once I edit this um, I might then do a little section a voiceover section with the electrical schematics for the van that are online and I have them uh, so you can see where everything fits in 
Uh, I will also try to leave links for um, the, um, the gear that I'm installing because the batteries, for instance, the Renogy batteries were the only ones that I could find that are straight drop-ins uh, on the original spaces, in the original spaces. They fit like a glove. Um, most of the other batteries I could find online um, that wasn't really the case. Um, some were too wide, some were too tall. Um, so the Renogy batteries with their 12 volt, 100 amp hour, which is more than the 12 volt, 80 amp hour of the original AGMs, AGM batteries, were the only ones that I could find that were, I think, the best, the best um, use um, of the space available. Um, with the largest amp hour rating they are also they have good reviews online I can uh, post also a link to a channel that I saw where they do a breakdown of the Renogy lithium iron phosphate batteries and they have nothing but good things to say about it um, so that's why I got them I got a good deal recently on the uh, European website so I got them both. I got the two solar panels, not from Ranjiji, from a company called Off-Grid off Tech. They're also the perfect size to fit in between the roof rails. Uh, that's why I got them. Uh, then again, the Bluetooth controller. Um, one, another good thing about the batteries is that it's just a network cable between them and then off to a display where you can just, with the press of the button, cut off the power and set them to a shelf mode which is really good because if the van is sitting still um, is sitting is uh, in the garage and not being driven around you can just turn them off um, and yeah well um, uh, I'll make another video when I have any updates when I do some more work on it uh, so I uh, I keep you updated to uh, how everything is going and how I'm doing stuff in the meanwhile again Please, if you have any ideas or any questions, please shoot. See you later. Have a great uh, week. And if this is something that interests you, please subscribe, like, whatever. <laughs> Again, as much as I'm hoping to, uh, to help someone, uh, these are just mostly for my reference and maybe to find some help or a better way to do things if uh, anyone else is uh, looking to, uh, is watching this, okay? So thanks, thanks a lot, and uh, see you later.